It is post dressage. It's Friday evening in Kentucky. We're sitting in a windy little, what would you call this? Like a, kind of like the, a, the, far, the farthest corner of the trade fair I think you could possibly find, honestly. Yeah, it's like there's a lot of glitz and glamour at Kentucky this year, but like this probably isn't it. We're, we're kind of behind a load of trucks. Uh, so if you're hearing a little bit of background noise, we think it's okay as an atmosphere, but um, we're trying to get through. So here we are. It's Friday evening at Kentucky. There's been a lot happening this week. I'm, I'm here with Sally, um, managing editor of Eventing Nation. We're going to be talking all the way through, I think, Sally, not just what happened in the dress size. We're going to get to that in a moment. Here we're going to talk about the four star short, we're going to talk about the five star, we're going to talk about what has happened, we're going to have a little look to tomorrow in terms of that cross country track that we're facing uh, and how things might play out. It's been such a hectic week that I actually can't remember if we've reacted to this news on a pod yet or not, but I feel like I've reacted to it a thousand times in, in, in real life. <laughs> Let's start with the My Bomb news. It broke, it broke my heart. Hmm. Um, to not see Tammy here in the four-star show. Very much so. I think we were all expecting to see the defending Kentucky five-star champion come back and uh, take a shot at the four-star, which you know she had opted to do for for many reasons, most of which you know having to do with Olympic selection and the fact that the horse just doesn't need to run at that level in preparation for this. So um, I think most of our money was probably on uh, one of a couple horses that. Um, you know, we, we may not necessarily have anything to talk about this weekend. So it was very di disappointing. Um, she posted a statement saying, you know, the horse had gotten away from a handler at home and in California where they base and uh, had just tweaked himself enough that it wasn't worth risking putting him on the trailer for competition. And, you know, it's a three day drive from California. So it's quite a strenuous journey. So um, she opted to just play it safe and hopefully we'll see him back soon. But um, very devastating to not have her back here this year with that horse. So we then have a new favorite. So what do Echo Ratings change the covers? So we had like a hundred copies of our phone grades already, <laughs> did. already printed with my bomb. I thought, you know what? Let's go all out for Kentucky this year. Let's print these phone grades. <laughs> Those digital things that I've been talking about for so long. That's the end of them. Let's go. I've got business cards with my bomb on them. I've got, um, I've got a hundred, yeah, as I say, like a hundred sixty-three pages of color printed and bound with my bomb on it. I think that's what they call a jinx, my friend. Yeah, well, it gets worse because <laughs> when that happened, I then said, you know what? Let's <laughs> let's get the other guy in. If you know, if it's not my bomb who wins the Olympics, I know the horse that is going to win the Olympics. Um, you know, British company uh, excluded here, and maybe one from Germany as well, who I think has just gone out and posted a big. 17 score and a three star short today mm -hmm. as well but um outside of those i put all the rest of the money the entire money that we got <laughs> <laughs> we're just good we're going to make a loss now <laughs> uh, i put it all on chin tonic and got another 100 copies printed which will arrive in the hotel tonight <laughs> um and last night i sat down I thought the day's work was done and okay we're joking a little bit it's 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 disappointing for us as fans not to see Chin Tonic and Will come out of course it's disappointing for Will what was your your good feel when you saw that backing up to my bomb news oh gosh you know I got a text message from the the woman who runs the PR for Hyperion Stud who is a, the wonderful owners and supporters of Will Coleman and uh, not owners of Will Coleman but uh, they own Chin Tonic and um, you know they they ended up found, finding a small issue with the carpal sheath um, on the horse and was enough of an issue that, you know, was not absolutely not worth pushing the horse to compete this weekend and risking an injury. Um, I do not know the extent. Uh, it does not seem to me if I'm, if I'm speculating a little bit, it doesn't seem to me that it's something that's an active injury, but, um, you know, Vicki Castigran, who's the owner of Hyperion Stud is a wonderful supporter of Wills. And she, without question, you know, said, I will support this decision. And, um, I think anybody that knows Will Coleman knows that he's always going to put his horses first, no matter what his personal goals are. So, um, uh, but I, I got to tell you, my stomach dropped a little bit. <laughs> oh. I, I was pretty disappointed. Yeah, uh, me too. And, you know, it actually became a different, you know, particularly around Kentucky, the level of reporting, like uh, I'm sure almost everybody, if not everybody listening to the eventing podcast will be so familiar with EN around this time, um, these couple of weeks as we go Kentucky into badminton in particular, but, but of course all through the year, you know, I think Sally, Eck Ratings and Eventing Nation, like we share a number of, 
of things in common when it comes to finding the narrative and whether it's through whether it's through all the the color the imagery and and the and the interviews that you guys have the live reporting whether it's through the data angle which we'll take normally it becomes a new challenge for us when actually you get those two out and the story really changed for me because mm -hmm. it became a Liz Halliday story yes. and I don't like you initially had that head to head of the two superstars Mixmaster C is not too far away like it, there was a little bit of disappointment there in at the Pan Ams for sure but to be honest the results either side of that like you know you had it's easy to forget like a podium here in the five star last year where mm -hmm. my bomb took so much of the of the glory sure. rightly but a little bit under radar mix master c hitting that podium on and his then, first five star yeah yep. and then and then a top five in Aachen as well you know mm -hmm. like again yaz but yaz takes a lot of the glory for winning Aachen, but just tipping, tipping away under the radar um is mix master c for me though when those two big names came out mix master c not a small name but it actually gets quite it becomes a different narrative for them because between uh cooley quicksilver and then mix master c um, Liz became a big favourite, almost a 50-50 chance when you combine the two horses of winning this. It's a different type of pressure and it's a different type of story for us to report on and tell when actually you're trying to build a class a little bit around Liz and probably, um, and probably, and I'm talking pre-competition because another name emerges um, during the competition with a big, a very big test. But pre-competition we were probably looking at a big Liz day and then, um, and probably what would happen with Blake and Caroline Martin was the other, was the other one I was really interested in. Sure. Yeah, and, you know, I think going back to what you said about the Pan Ams, I think I think Mixmaster C could be a little forgiven for you know some of the the trouble that she had there. I mean, you know, it was a it was a, it was a step down in terms of level for cross country, and that horse is is very much made for these big beefy four star five star tracks. And um, you know, I think it was a very big challenge for Liz to achieve the right ability that she hoped, and she didn't really get it on cross country there. And you know, that carried over a little bit into the show jumping and. You know, this year Liz has come out very positive about Mickey, um, saying you know she's changed up his bit a little bit. Um, she's got him feeling like he will listen and come back to her, which is what obviously they want. Um, the four-star short tracks have historically been a little tough for her, only because she has trouble with the right ability, or she has had trouble. And I think um, this will very much be a validation for her if she can get around quickly uh, with right ability. Um, but you bring up a very good point with uh, Caroline Pumuchu, who. Um, you know, I think people forget how much she has done with HSH Blake. He came up through the uh, USEA Young Event Horse. He did the six and seven year old uh, competitions with the USEF. Um, the horse just keeps winning. And I think at this point, Caroline is very much making a strong bid for a pair of selection. And I think if she could come out on top this weekend, she will very much put herself in contention for a spot. Um, uh, you know, I also think to, to to throw another name in the mix, I wouldn't necessarily count out Boyd with uh, Boyd Martin with Commando oh, Fury yeah, and yeah. and Fetterman B. I think he's got two very excellent horses, and he's very well sat to to have a good weekend. Yeah, I think the Commando Three situation in particular. I don't I don't know why. I'm, maybe it's Nicole's influence. Nicole has obsessed over Commando Three for some time now. I'm with you, Nicole. So I think it could be her influence, but I'm I'm really drawn to what's happening there. Um, I think you're right. You know, isn't it great, Sally, though, to be here? Like, you, as both a fan and as someone, like, you know, so deep in the industry in the U.S., isn't it great to be here now, being able to list horses? One, at, like, and we're not even, we're actually talking about the four-star, and I know there was sure. a lot of superstars in the four-star, but, like, we're not even talking about the fact that, you know, Cooley Nutcracker and Liz, again, five-star debut, again, on a dressage podium under, under, under five star debut, Vermiculous, the other end of their career, but a top cross country horse again on the podium, uh, or the dressage podium, I should say. We're not even talking about the five star. We're listing horses, young and old, uh, like an 18 year old, my bomb, we started the show on, I think is Blake nine, I think uh, HS, yep. HS Blake with, yep. uh, with Caroline Pamuchki, nine year old, the other end of the career. It feels like something strong is building here. Oh it my feels gosh. like, the, yes, we're obsessing a little bit over the Brits and the strength. But for me, it's been a story that's bubbled away for a while. The U.S. is a real, real coming force in the sport now. Absolutely. And I, I can't tell you as somebody who's covered the, the sport, particularly on the American side, the U.S. side for several years. I mean, gosh, it's, I, can, I can still remember a time when, you know, you, you'd look at the upcoming championship and you'd have about three horses in mind for who would make it. And those were pretty much it. You know, you didn't go too much farther than that. And now, you know, it's we're getting so much depth. And I think there's a huge credit to the 
the developing the eventing pathway program that USEF has started to implement. I think the help of Bobby Costello, Leslie Law developing the Young Writers, Ian Stark advising on the cross country. I mean, you know, starting in before Petoni, but obviously with the result we had in Petoni and winning t Team Silver. I mean, yeah. gosh, it's it's a good time to be a U.S. writer. That's for sure. Yeah, I talked about it a little bit on our preview show. I, um, I, I strongly believe because of some of the other nations as well, Sally, because of where things are playing out, that it actually if the U.S. can maintain this momentum, mm -hmm. that there is a gap now to fill with, you know, potentially the Australians, the Kiwis. Um, the French are always a little bit unusual. It'll be difficult for them. and It'll be difficult to, to, to assess their strengths, I think, sometimes, particularly with the power of a home Olympics. Yeah. But, um, but there's no doubt from a ratings point of view that... Um, the U.S. I think are the emerging force to challenge the Brits, and in a three from three competition, yep, it feels like you know it, it feels like it's there to really go up against them. If you could build the momentum of a of another team medal of any color, of another individual medal of yes. any color, but, but but gold is but gold is available. Um, imagine the power that we build going into an LA 28 story. Absolutely. Yeah. I mean, uh, and, and uh, you know, particularly with the future of eventing uncertain past LA, it, it's, it's, it's a, it's, there's the pressure is on, right. And the, the development, you know, the development of the, the U S program has very much been with LA in mind to come and really make a uh, impact there. But, you know, Hey, we'll, we'll take Paris in between two and grab a medal there and set us up well for the next four years, which would be, which would be incredible. It's, it's, it's very positive. I can remember very recent times when we didn't feel so positive about who we were sending and what the result was going to be, and that's not a discredit to the writers that we did select, of course. But um, you know, it's it's very nice to have so much depth now and and and, and more coming up and the levels coming, too. Yeah, you know? And more coming. Let's go back to tomorrow from a four star, and then we'll, and then we'll go over to the five star. But when we were initially setting this up from a storytelling point of view, we discussed this a number of weeks ago, and. Um, for a long time, Sally, this has been a this this narrative around the four star short has been driven by what happens at Paris, and that was primarily driven, I think, by the first three horses lining up. And it was, of course, at the time, as we've mentioned, my bomb chin tonic mix master C. Yep. Mix master C now because of the way things have fallen, because of a you know because of a good dressage test, and because of the start today, mix master C is is a big favourite to go on and win this, but still has plenty of questions to answer tomorrow. There's a we shouldn't deviate too far from the Olympic story because we've talked about Blake, we've talked about Commando, and they all have they all have to go out there tomorrow and deliver. Yep. And it really because of this uncertainty, and it feels like both those injuries, if you could even call them that, are very temporary and just bad timing. Sure. But it'd be wrong for us not to allow that story to develop somewhat when we're talking about it. Absolutely. Which is if you don't take your chance, and neither of them are available to take their chance this weekend, a horse like Blake, a horse like Commando, a horse like, you know, Julent maybe, and, and Philip who'll be, who'll be trying everything to try and get back to, to, uh, to an eighth Olympics. Um, there is a big chance for someone tomorrow to go out and step through um, this, this door, which has been left a tiny bit ajar. Yes. Yeah, I, I, I totally agree. I, you know, I do think Will Coleman is, uh, you know, he's got a great backup, if you even want to call him that, and off the record. And, and um, you know, obviously he won Aachen with that horse and went to Protoni with it. And I think, um, you know, that's, that's definitely, uh, you know, I don't even want to call it a sleeper because I think yeah, that yeah. could easily have been selected as, as alongside Chintonic. So I yeah. think you've got... But, you know, I agree he with you. He has the Diablo, think, Diablo. And the Diablo, Diablo horse, could he, yeah. Could he be a sleeper? I, I think he could be. I don't know that he's necessarily got the experience yet. I, yeah. I think, um, so Will's planning to take that horse to the Moulin in June for okay. his first five-star. So, um, to me, it appears that he's not necessarily his front runner. You know, of course, I'm, I'm putting words in his mouth a little <laughs> yeah, yeah, bit. Yeah. But, um, yeah, yeah. you know, I think, I, I think that one is going to be one that's still kind of gaining that experience and the results that he's going to need to get selected. Um, I, would, I would probably put off the record in front of Diabolo for sure. Um, but you're right. I mean, the door, you know, if these injuries end up and being anything or putting any delays, I mean, team selection is not that far away. I mean, I would say we're about a month away from, from selecting a team here. So um, I think the door is wide open, and I think that will really interpret or uh, impact the writers' plans this weekend for tomorrow in particular. <laughs> it's, a, 
is a nightmare if you're picking this team. Oh, God. <laughs> like I said, it used to be easy. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Exactly. <laughs> hey, we can't move on from today um, until we talk about Lucien. Um, Absolutely. Lucien, Bellissimo, and, and Deary. Is that how you Deary, yeah. Deary, yeah. Mm -hmm. So I wouldn't say it was out of the blue, this test, but certainly I, um, a lot of tests that we saw this weekend, four-star and five-star Sally, we saw them judged, um, I would say, about two marks on average if we were to take four classes but I'm taking this more from memory in my head and probably it did the five star in particular is about two to three marks ac ac across both days above where you expect so yeah. when you end up seeing um, some of your leaders and some of the scores they're on they're 25s and 26s rather than 22s and 23s which we've seen both JL Dublin and Banzai de Loire uh, deliver yep. but actually we saw that across the board mm -hmm. where I'm going with that is Deary came in here uh, with an average of, let's say, if you go back looking through the recent tests, you probably, uh, you would have seen them at Aiken. They're, they're, they're about the 31 mark. Yeah. So if they'd ended up on a 33, uh, which we saw our world champion wasn't too far away from that, like there was a lot of horses that ended up in that 33. I think there's 16 horses in this class who are 32 or below, but mm -hmm. 10 of them are actually between 30 and 32. Mm -hmm. If they'd ended up in that 10, and by the way, in that 10, you're looking at all of your big names, Boyd Martin, Philip, um, Caroline Kamuchku has one in there, Will has one in there. All of them are all bunched up in that 30-32. Yeah. If Lucienne was in there, I don't think we would have taken any real notice. It would have still been a very good day because maybe we would have thought she could be 33, 34. Mm -hmm. And I say that just on an average. To deliver a 26, um, it's, a, it's the best dressage, international dressage test of Deary's career. Yeah. To do it in that atmosphere Absolutely. when needed. I mean, it's a very special Friday night in that camp. Very much so. And you know, what I find very interesting is, um, you know, they do arena fam familiarization. I have struggled saying that word all the <laughs> um, They do arena familiarization, you know, the night before they go into uh, dressage. So, you know, they get the chance to get in the ring and loosen up and see the see the sights. Um, Lucienne actually chose not to do that with her horse. She okay. decided... Um, you know, she would. She she thought maybe if she did it, she would go in today thinking a little bit backwards. And she said, you know, look, she acknowledged it was a risk. Um, you never know if that's going to pay off or not. But in this case, it it absolutely did. And you know, I think after her ride, she was she was just so happy. I mean, she said she was thrilled. Um, she called him a little introverted. Um, you know, he loses a little confidence on the center line. But she said today, she, he really let her ride him. And I think that's where that difference is coming from today. And I mean, what a what a time to put down a result like that. Yeah, absolutely. And like, look, if we go back over the last couple of years and we're trying to play out how this works, a lot's going to depend on t probably time penalties, yeah. I would say, tomorrow. Yeah. You can see, actually, they're a very, they're a good, reliable cross-country jumper. There's very few falls of any, and there's none in their recent record. And that, if we look at the last year, you know, we've got Florida, Ocala, uh, Bromont, Aiken, Morven Park. You know, we see that, we see that loop happening. We have some uh, top fives in there. But I would say the area that we're going to be watching for tomorrow in terms of keeping them up there is going to be the speed, getting that rhythm right cross country and yep. trying to minimize those time penalties. Yep, absolutely. I mean, one of her quickest rounds has come at, uh, you know, stable view and try on, neither one of which are really going to have the amount of terrain that you're going to have here. But, you know, they're, they're not flat. So, you know, there there is potential in there that she could get at least close to that number, if not below it. But you know, as with any short format, time is always a factor. It's hard, it's hard to make the time at these these short formats. But, you know, I do think the advantage of this short format is that it is still a Derek de Grazia course. It is still at the Kentucky Horse Park, and there is still plenty of room to gallop. Yeah. Um, so I think that will be advantageous. And I think it's worth reiterating. I, there's nobody listening to this show who doesn't know this. Sally, you asked me, by the way, before we started, how long do you think it will be? And I said, it'll probably be 20 minutes. So we're coming to the... We hit that we're, mark at we're, least. We're coming to the, we're coming to the, the horse who's second in the four-star <laughs> short. We're doing great. <laughs> There's just so much to talk about. <laughs> uh, but what I would say on Derry is, um, or sorry, on on the on the sport in general at this point, to deliver a twenty-six and for that big cluster of the field, um, you know, as I said, ten horses. Um, Sitting in around, like, uh, beginning with off the record, Will Coleman on a 30.1, who's um, in, in seventh at the moment. Between, that's 10 seconds, mm -hmm. those four marks. Like, mm -hmm. it's it, the dressage phase is so influential. To, 
to give someone 10 seconds, two and a half, two and a half rail, you know, or sorry, a full rail, um, it's, it's a, it's a huge, it, what I mean is even if they, even if they are a bit slow in place, they've given themselves 10 extra seconds. Absolutely. You know, Derry now has a right chance of finishing in the top five and depending on how this track plays out, like they're not all superstar or speedsters behind her. Like there are, there are a few fast horses in there that'll be coming. But I think it's a great position. They've given themselves a great platform. And if you look through it, I think tomorrow sets up really, really well now. Mixmaster C, Derry, and HSH Blake as your top three, but very close behind. Boyd Martin with Commando Tree, who, who Sally mentioned, Nicole loves. They're pushing. Cooley Quicksilver came in. I'm going to just tell you, Cooley Quicksilver's in number five at the moment, um, and that's your top five going in. Then you've got that big cluster. Before I go, because... Um, because the, the the results are one thing. Where we try, where the exciting piece for me when we get to the end of a phase is, tell me the, give me the updated prediction center. Mm -hmm. So what that prediction center is not being influenced by is me thinking things like, oh, Terry has ten seconds. What does that mean? Actually, where the prediction center says is, Mixmaster sees a twenty six percent win chance, over ten percent uh, clear on anyone else in the field. Mm -hmm remains the favorite as as they were Everyone before nothing. the big winner of the day is hsh play yeah. and 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 caroline from Mushku. they're up now to 14 percent and then number three it's not Derry, uh it's not will coleman it's not boyd martin it's actually liz halliday again on yep. coolie quicksilver so the pressure is there on uh, your we will be expecting to see liz hopefully on the podium tomorrow night or on the on the on the saturday evening four-star podium we'll see how it goes she has two big plays at it but right now, that's uh, that's how we're leaving the four star short. Liz Halliday, twenty six percent win chance. Caroline Kamuchku next, fourteen percent with with Blake, and then Liz Halliday again with Cooley Quicksilver. Uh, you can see that prediction center, I think, on all of our probably on all social media at this point. Uh, prediction center on our new site as well. Okay, that's the four star short. On to the other one. Normally, you're kind of thinking on to the main event, but actually, this year we've talked about it multiple times. Yeah, they're, 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 it is fun, isn't it? The two of them alongside each other, it's so great. It's kind of hard to get like it's kind of hard to uh gather yourself and go like, Oh, right, over to over, oh, yeah, to, over to let's go talk about like the world <laughs> champion, the European champion horse. Uh, let's go and see. Um, okay, let's start with. Who do we start with? We can we can start. We can, who do you want to start with? Do you want to go to the very top? Like we just saw Tom McCune talking about how much he loves Kentucky in the press conference. Um, I spoke to him after. I said, "Are you, you are you just saying that now because you're in an American yeah. press conference and you're just being nice?" And he said, "No." He said, "Look." He said, "Where he is up in Gackham, he said the ground is is incomparable to what we're seeing here in Kentucky." He said, "Kentucky." He said, "Badminton is going to be wet," mm -hmm. and that's not. That's not anything on Babington. Cheltenham, sure. Cheltenham uh, to British British racing fans will know, like Cheltenham prides itself in March on being the ground being good to soft, no matter what the weather is, because they're looking at the weather all the year, they're adding a bit of sand, they're, t they're adding a little bit of water. No matter what happens, the ground at Cheltenham is good to soft. This year, the ground is heavy. Mm. Babington is going to be a very different type of track. Absolutely. He was absolutely made up with the terrain that he's facing out here, mm -hmm. with the quality of the course. Um, he's also delivered first phase 24.6 it's a couple of marks ahead of where we thought he might it's not a record breaking test it's just outside the top 10 tests in Kentucky but it's on a par if you add two to all of these tests it probably works out about the same across the board in terms of the ranking is the same as what we would have expected so JL Dublin leads anything in particular from that test did you see this Falcon people are telling me about yeah so I didn't see it but I heard about it and I guess the, the crowd started losing their mind when they he was in the middle of, in the middle of his test I asked him if he noticed and you know of course he's very focused he didn't notice it I was like well you know apparently a bird of prey caught a squirrel and it was screaming and the bird of the, the hawk was circling over the stands and so everybody was kind of flipping out about that so you know luckily nobody seemed to distract him from the job at hand and you know, I think Tom actually would have wanted to have a couple of those points back. I think uh, there was a few with marks that he felt like he missed, but overall, I think he was very pleased with the horse. And um, you know, I think he, he wanted to give himself a little bit more of a cushion over over the Yasmin and uh, Banzai. But you know, I think uh, first place is first place at this point. We'll take it. You'll see and hear all of the quotes on on the Eventing Nation reporting. But I thought it was interesting the way when he was asked in the press conference about he's asked something like why did you pick Kentucky or sure. something along mm -hmm. those lines? And, you know, he said, 
the quality of the British team right now. Like we have to go out and prove ourselves. Like no matter where we go, we have to run to win. We're all stacked up with talent. It was interesting. Like I was standing beside Yaz at the time. She was watching the press conference as well. And it, it's an interesting pressure. Like he knows that like from the, from this, from the, the minute these dressage tests are on, everything is on the line, not just at the moment, like not just Kentucky. Again, I don't want to sure. keep going to an Olympic year. We're at Kentucky. It has its own thing, but it just feels so important that you can see that pressure. You can see that context, even in the press conference, like the kind of little bit of intensity is there, which is he's talking about, look, the reason I'm here and the reason I want to win is because the world champion yep. is just down there looking at me. And yep. if I want to be on this team, I got to deliver. Absolutely. First yeah. Yeah, I think they both do. You know, I think um, with the depth that the, the British have or are very fortunate to have now and uh, defending champions in the Olympics, I think, you know, the pressure is on. And I, I think they're right. I mean, they, the Asman and Tom have both said, you know, the reason they chose to come here was A, because they just love it here because who yeah. doesn't? Um, but B, you know, the there is a need to distinguish themselves. And um, I think the same could be said for Oliver as well. You know, I think there, there is a need to set themselves apart and uh, a strong result here in an Olympic year would go a long way. Um, you know, I think uh, obviously Tom had a great year last year. Yasmin didn't have the year she wanted, but I think um, they'll both be out to get it tomorrow. They'll both be out to get it. But I'd say, you know, on Tom as well, he had that he had that blip at the he Europeans did. as yep. well. Mm -hmm. Like so, both of them, at, like both of them have, as you say, like both of them are out to get it. Yep, they've got they both got a little bit of something to prove, despite the success they've already showed us. I think there's just with with the solidarity that is the British team right now, there is um, not much margin for error. Let's put it that way. Isn't it, isn't it, I mean, this, again, I keep going back to this, and I'm kind of conscious I'm doing it, but it's a, it's difficult to get away from it. It is a nightmare situation to try and pick the U.S. team, like, sure. particularly with those big two kind of half in, half out. Like, I mean, that's the wrong, like, am I even allowed to say that half in, half out? But, like, <laughs> half in is that, like, we expected Gin Tonic and My Bomb to mm -hmm. be pretty close to selection, I would say, like, just good feeling as a fan. Um half out because like I just don't know where they are after this yep in Britain you're thinking half in half out well it's a five-star winner who came second at Kentucky in, in in Tom McCune and then you're saying has to prove himself because sitting at home you've got Laura Collett London 52 <laughs> three, you know a three-time five-star with you and you can and you can start going through the list yep. um you know next week you'll probably see Oliver compete in Ballamore class who's the mm -hmm. Burley winner Cooley Rosalind today it didn't go the way that like from the first movements of the test, yeah. it didn't go the way that no. they would have wanted. I think they started on, you know, they started on a broken movement and they didn't really get back into the into the mid twenties at any point. Um, difficult to win from here, my good feeling, even for Oliver. We need that. If he was to win from here on a thirty, on a, what's he on? Thirty one point four. He's in eight. It's a very similar score to where Mary King was actually sure. yep. back in twenty eleven on King's Temptress. But nobody, like, that's the last person to win from the 30s. Sure. That's the last person to win from the 30s. Now, maybe you'd say a little bit different today because there's only two horses actually in the 20s. Mm -hmm. Does that set things up differently? But um, you might, would you, are you going to count, are you going to count Oliver out? No, I'm not going to count. I don't think you ever count Oliver out. I think no, I Oliver don't. is Oliver for a reason. Um, and, you know, I think, uh, again, with, you know, he's in, he's in uh, eighth place right now. So there's, there's not much room there, there's not much room that he has to climb i mean um you've got one first time five star horse in there two first time five star horses are three actually five first yeah first, first time five yeah, star yeah. horses in that top eight so you know anything could happen at this point with those horses as they as they get their first sea legs under them but you know so I, yeah i don't think you count oliver oliver town in doubt i don't i really don't i wouldn't i mean no oh, sorry when i say i wouldn't count him out i you need yeah he's now got the way the sport is set up, I mentioned it earlier with the time penalties and the rails, when someone like a JL Dublin is on a 24.6, you kind of can't afford to be six marks away sure. if you want to win. Absolutely. Yeah. Of course, of course. Like I watch enough of it, we all watch enough of it to know that anything can happen, blah, blah. But the likelihood of anything can happen or the, 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 the stats version of anything can happen is just what is the chance? Yes. And like how we would assess that at the moment when I go, I'm just going to take a quick look at Prediction Centre. And we say, like, anything can happen, tell us the chance of it. And Prediction Centre is loading. Tom McEwen is now at 38% win mm -hmm. chance. Um, 
Yaz Ingham is next on a 30% win chance. Oh, so we close. have those, we have those quite head to head. That's interesting. Mm -hmm. Cooley Nutcracker third, but a good gap. Yeah. We're all, like in terms of a win now, uh, that first time five star Liz Holiday, Cooley Nutcracker, 8%. And that's where Oliver Tannen is. Those two 10 year olds, two of the top rated 10 year olds in the world, sitting alongside each other, 7% for, for Cooley Rosalind. Um, so he's ahead of horses who are ahead of him in the ranking, Kirsty Chabert, uh, even, even the great Vermiculars and Lauren Nicholson. He's ahead of them in the percentage chance. But as you can see, on a, from a numbers point of view, it's a 93% chance that he doesn't win from yep. here. Yep. At this point of the competition, you're sharing the win chance out between, uh, between Tom and Yaz. Uh, Nutcracker, Liz will be pleased. What, what were you, did yeah. you see it? Yeah, what, she, was, she was very pleased. Um... She's she's believed in this horse for a long time. She's had him for basically his whole career, and um, you know he's very sharp. I th I don't think you'd necessarily know that by watching him ride her, right? Watching her yeah. ride him, but um, he is quite sharp, and I think she tends to prefer a horse that's a little bit like that. Um, you know, she said she was about halfway around the Galway four star long course last year when she said, "I think this horse is finally ready to step up to five star." Okay. Um, you know, he used to jump very big and uh, had to look and understand everything, and now he's starting to really see and understand and. Um, you know, if we know Liz, she's she's not going to be hanging around tomorrow either. So I, I, I do think she's going to make good on this debut. Um, I would not count her out for a, a podium finish there if she can uh, if she can get around fast tomorrow. But, if, you know, of course, she's going to set this young horse up for a career and that could end, end up meaning taking a long ride or two, which would, of course, drop her down just a little bit. So um, but no, she's very high on the horse, um, very well sat on it. And I think uh, she's got a good shot. It's around this time that, like you know, there was a big exodus from the from the press center. The first couple of days, every, everyone's pretty everyone's pretty tied up in terms of the uh, the feedback that you get from across country point yep. of view. Like yep. you kind of hear like they're both big tracks, and you hear all the standards. I mean, how sure. many times have you heard it? And you're like, oh, it's, it's a Derek de Grazia track. It's a Derek de Grazia track. Okay. <laughs> This water, let's think about the Derek de Grazia track. Uh, people will say Lauren actually said it in the press conference. She said. If you ride, she said something like, like the money ball line, she said something like, if you, if you ride well, it rides well. Yeah, <laughs> simple the, enough. Those kind of <laughs> conundrums, uh, if, yeah, if you ride well, it rides well. So those are the kind of conundrums that, Sally, they were, that's why I have to set up Epic Ratings. Like that was, they were the type of, that was the type of, uh, you know, difficult to, to access nebulous concepts that like when I was arriving into the sport as a, you know, as a non-equestrian, I was like, I just... Is there any way? Of, uh, <laughs> How do we make what, sense of what all of this? It, what, what will that mean? <laughs> have you got any? Have you heard anything yet in terms of? Uh, because I, I'm asking this in the context of as I look through the previous winners and we t and we think about Dublin, um, we think about Banzai and the, the head to head that they have to face. Almost all of the horses on this winning list going back to 2010 with Cool Mountain, almost all of them go clear inside the time. Absolutely. You know there is a big old test to answer tomorrow. Um, both from jumping and from a, and from a speed point of view. Absolutely. So it's an 11 minute, 15 second course this year. It's actually been reversed, um, which has not happened for quite a few years. I actually can't remember the last time it ran in this direction. And, um, you know, it really changes the terrain. I think, um, you know, obviously Kentucky, if you haven't been here, is um, it's very rolling. There's a lot of up and down. It's a it's a it's got a lot of space to gallop, but you're still very much pulling uphill at a lot of points in the course. Um, you know, I think I think it will be interesting. I, I've, most of the feedback I've heard from the course is very positive. Um, Buck Davidson, in particular, thought it was the best course Derek has done here in years, and um, just a lot of flow to it, not a lot of twisting and new turning and all of that. And um, so the riders are feeling positive. But you know, there's a couple new complexes out there. There's a there's a new mound that's a that's a very narrow, very wide oxer, and then you have to kind of, you know turn around to the right to a very, very angled brush fence that is also on the side of a mound that will kind of try to carry the momentum of the horse down. So I think that could potentially be an, a, an interesting new question to watch. Um, the coffin, the part question um, comes at the end of the course this year. Um, it's, I believe, the second second from last combination. And that, that question, I think, will cause some influence. Um, there's a big downhill pull from the Normandy Bank. You're basically coming downhill all the way to the coffin, which is good from a from a wind standpoint, but potentially bad for a tired horse that's potentially going to have trouble then sitting back and putting weight on the hind end to get its feet out of the way to not hit the frangible pin on the way in. But then if you make it over those A and B elements, you've got a very sharp right hand one strike turn to a double angled brush 
Um, it's a very, very difficult question for that late in any point in the course, but especially that late in the course. Um, that is the, it is a different question than last year, but that is the location that Yasmin had her drive by last year. Um, Tammy Smith has also had that frangible pin down with my bomb in, uh, 2022, oh. I believe. So that is always an influential question. And the fact that it comes so late in the course, I think it's going to be very interesting. Uh, Boyd Martin said that the long route there, which kind of sweeps you around to the left instead of going right to the brushes, um, he said that that uh, long route might actually not take up that much time. So there there could be several pairs that end up taking that long route there. Um, but that, that's the question I'm really going to be looking at is the, the influencer and the, and the heartbreaker that close to home. You know, as you're talking, I'm looking through. I'm, I'm, I'm looking through where those horses currently sit, and I'm also looking through who are the top cross country horses, and I'm trying to match up. Is there anyone in here? I'm actually. I had to go. I had to go down. Um, yeah. If I'm honest, I had to go down a lot, a lot further than I wanted. Let me see. Where is he gone? Doug, uh, Doug Payne. Doug Payne. Doug Payne. Doug. Yeah, Doug didn't quite have the dressage. I think he would have won it on Quantum Leap. I mean, he's down almost in 30th place. Oh, God's sake. Um, yeah, it was a 39.9. Yep. Um, definitely not. I mean, that horse has gotten into the 20s before and it once at this level. I think um, Doug was very proud of the preparation he'd done on the flat, uh, trying to work out a new warm-up system for Quantum Leap. Didn't quite work out for him this weekend so but you know I mean that horse is one of the most reliable jumpers in the field I'm sure you're you're confirming that with yeah, your, yeah yeah your numbers right now but um he's got a lot of climbing to do but he would be an example of how to ride this cross-country horse uh, cross-country course I mean that horse is so experienced now at this point um it would be very shocking if he had some issue tomorrow yeah I don't think he's having an issue but you you want it to be I mean just looking through these dress size scores recent ones like it was a 34.3 at Aiken it's just such a different platform to jump from absolutely like we're we talked about it in the four star short with 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 Jerry and Lucienne yep the four marks that you give yourself it really really impacts I think what you can do I was going to say a quantum leap it, quantum leap is one of the superstars of 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 the cross country and the show jumping I think absolutely. we saw them have a rail at Maryland mm -hmm. but they were on a streak of five star clears pre-Maryland which mm -hmm. was I think coming up to being one of the longest you know at five star in the sport up until that rail yep. but uh, traditionally okay we, we weren't expecting them to challenge you know the, the, the Banzai's and the JL Dublins but it's been 34, 34, 35, 35 for the last number of tests um, it was a 33 here last year in the five star um, last year it was a top 10 finish based on a fast you know three, they only had a 3.6 and then they jumped clear as we would have expected on the final day um probably too much to do but a great horse yeah. to in terms of i think the example of what we might see cross country absolutely yeah i mean that that's one that you again will we'll see him mostly i don't think he'll plan i don't think he'll have a plan a of taking a long route anywhere of course unless he has an issue i mean quantum leap is, is at this point one of the, the most rideable horses i would say in the field as well so that works to doug's advantage he barely has to set the horse up to make a distance so um he'll set an example that's for sure what would it what would it be like in Eventing Nation HQ, in the multiple event, Eventing Nation HQs, <laughs> um, if another horse, I'm looking here, one of the ways that, I mean, there's so many ways of measuring cross-country jumping prowess, but a very simple one and an accessible one is just looking at the percentage clear rate in their last 10 runs. Yep. If you were just to take people's last 10 runs, any level, how often is this horse jumping clear? Quantum Leap is 100%. On cue for Boyd Martin is 100%. But let's go climb back up there to the top of the leaderboard. Vermiculous uh, with Lauren Nicholson is 100%. Yeah. What, would a, what would a podium mean in that camp? You know, Lauren uh, Lauren made us all a little emotional today after her test. I think she was uh, she she choked up a little bit talking just about the, 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 the pressure she puts on herself and the, the responsibility she feels to the people who take care of her team and her horses. And um, to go in and be able to put in a test like that, I mean, she actually came out and said it felt like it was a like white riding a wild Arabian stallion today. He has a he has a little bit of a tick where if he's going to do something crazy, he twitches his ear. And so she actually took his bonnet off before she went down the ramp because she was like, if he's going to do something, I want to be able to see it. 
and he did it in the ring and she was able to kind of you know get him down because of, apparently normally that ear twitch is followed by a leap into the air so, okay right you know that has affected his scores before but gosh i mean she has put herself into such a great position uh, the horse actually had most of last year off he did come to kentucky last year but he was withdrawn okay. um turned out he had a small injury then she just kind of took her time bringing him back you know he's another horse that's a little bit older yeah um, but gosh, I mean, he's a cross country horse. It is going to be a little bit hot tomorrow, which is something we haven't really seen this far north yet. Uh, but Lauren wasn't concerned at all. She said she did her last gallop down in Ocala before she came up here in 100 degree heat. Yeah. Uh, you know, those of you who don't know, you know, Lauren's a huge fan of the Arabians and Vermiculus does actually have quite a bit of Arabian in him. So I, I wouldn't think the temperatures are going to affect him too much. We'll see because she does go towards the end of the day. But um, I mean, gosh, what a horse and, you know, what a ride it's been for her. Yeah, I mean, they started on a 27, very similar to where they are now in Pertoni. It was a day when, uh, you know, there was a day when we saw plenty of uh, plenty of drama on the cross country. Oh, good drama. It was, a, it was one of those great cross country days uh, back in 2022. But, you know, they finished with, with just, you know, clear jumping around with 5.6. Uh, two down, but it was that, you know, you'll remember that one, Sally. Like, it was a cross, it was a show jumping Oof. track to forget. But it was a top 20 yes, finish, <laughs> a top 20 finish for Vermiculis. As you say, 2023, we didn't really see them. And we've only seen them once in 2024, but for Lauren, you know, such a huge part of the sport in the last decade. Like, you know, for, for me, coming into the sport in 2012, let's say, she was, she was such a huge name in that 20, yep. 2012 to 2018 run. She was the household name, I think, of, uh, of, of, of the US outside of maybe Philip at the time. Yep. And uh, to see her here, to see her in the position that she's in, and for things to be set up with, you know, that you've got you've got a great story, don't you? Absolutely, you've got a great story. Yeah, uh, a, a top finish from him would mean the world to so many people. And you know, don't count Lauren out for that Olympic selection either. You know, she's applied for the consideration, and um, to start where she is, and if she's able to finish where she is or higher, I mean, uh, you'd be remiss not to look, take a hard look at her too. Yeah, absolutely. Let's move on again. I, one other person I want to mention here before uh, before we wrap up is Sharon White. Klaus 63 is also in the top five. Mm -hmm. um, what was their score? Sorry, I'll just check. Right uh, 30.6 or 30.7, I believe. They're in that. They're, oh, 30.7. Yeah, they're just outside. So they oh, didn't. So close. That'll be so annoying. Well, oh, Kentucky, my God. Like in, in the Kentucky press conference like how many times does anyone get right. going to get to do a uh, kentucky press conference yeah <laughs> um but yeah 30.7 yeah just outside. Uh, you know sharon has worked so hard with klaus she's had him since he was five she bought him sight on scene from dirk schrade and uh in germany and um he, he's been a he's been a, a work in progress for sure i mean he's a very emotional sharp horse um sharon of course has produced now six horses to the five star level and um you know klaus Klaus has come out this year and he's very well capable of putting in a, a sub 30 score, but this year he has not quite managed to do that yet. Um, maybe once, um, but you know, I think, you know, he came out at Grand Prix eventing and got a high thirties, low 40 score. He came out again at Carolina, got a 39 and then, you know, kind of had a, a little bit of a drive by on cross country. So the dressage is there, but if he gets any type of tension, you know, it, it kind of goes out the window, but gosh, I mean, he really held it together in there. Uh, Sharon has been working a little bit with Nicholas Fife on the flat. Um, who really does a lot to help calm you know both her and klaus and and put them in a good a good stead i mean she did arena familiarization last night and she was only in there for about five ten minutes because he was so good um so she came out and she was just absolutely thrilled with where he started i think uh you know i saw her face after she looked at her score and i think she actually was hoping to get closer to that 29 mark um but gosh you can't be mad at, at holding on to third place for most of the day and then ending up in the top five after dressage that's on your debut with that horse yeah exactly and and you know what i'd mention as well is like she's a she's a very good cross-country rider absolutely um she's just, like she's 11 she's 11 five stars since 2008 sharon like uh, klaus is klaus is klaus is a rookie as we know but mm -hmm. but her average dressage her average dressage over those five stars is 37.2 yeah so she's much more in you know she's much more in the Cross country phase in terms of um, like you're you're fine at thirty seven point two in, in five star like you've got you're still sure. always part of the always part of the story, but you're not part of the Kentucky press conference story that Absolutely. often. Absolutely, yep. So it's a special moment, and I think I think whether it's Friday night 
it's a little bit different to what it'll feel like tomorrow night if you're in. Like people win from the cross country podiums, and you know you're going to jump in the stadium in the in the in the white hot yep. heat that yep. is Kentucky <laughs> on a on a Sunday afternoon like that atmosphere. Uh -huh. But isn't it amazing for the teams like Vermiculous, Nutcracker's team there, first time at the at the level. Like to be honest, Tom McCune and Yaz Ingham, they take this in their stride because they do it all the sure, time. Sure. But for a Klaus. For Klaus to get bought from Germany Absolutely. and to be sitting here, like they're the stories that you want to yeah. capture. Now go and do it cross country and, you know, stay in this story for tomorrow night. Gosh, I, I really hope she does. I mean, Sharon's a good friend of mine and I, I think um, she's going to be very uh, studious with her cross country walking today. Um, you know, I think, you know, I think Klaus absolutely has it in it. He's, he's put in several clear rounds on very tough tracks. Um, he's really matured. You know, he's been qualified for the five star for about two years now. She brought him here to do the four star in 2022 and... Uh, just to get him into this environment and get him some exposure and um you know she really didn't feel like he was ready to step up until this year and he's really started to put the pieces together you know of course she had a bit of a disappointing show jumping around it um the pan ams which i you know i think you can kind of almost toss that one out a little bit because he's actually quite a good show jumper um, and she spent some time over the winter doing some pure show jumping classes to kind of get that dialed in so she will have left no stone unturned in her preparation with this as is her nature the last source I want to mention is um, is Kirsty Chabert and Classic. Um, she's a bit of a superstar. I'm just looking at, at the fast horses for tomorrow. Like Kirsty Chabert comes to Ireland pretty regularly and wins whenever she comes. She's on on one of our metrics, the top speed percentage, and that's kind of Sally. This is one I hope that you'll enjoy over the coming years. But it's essentially like an OBP, which is. Uh, in OBP, you work on the basis of how many people did you take on, how many people did you finish ahead of. Mm -hmm. Why we developed that was, you know, we were looking at classes around the world where some people were competing, let's say, in a, an event in the UK like Torsby, where you could compete against 100 people. Mm -hmm. So if you finish top eight, you know, you've beaten. You've beaten a lot. You've beaten a lot. <laughs> um, whereas there are certain, you know, in other nations, there might only be 10 in the class. Yep. So if you finish top eight, it's a different it doesn't you know, hold quite as much weight there so yeah so the positional stuff um what we tried to develop something was to to recognize class size um i think that's such a valuable statistic actually it's an, it's an, it works is yeah. the key like when you actually see people lined up obp works we did the same with speed because we were always being challenged with like how do you judge how fast the horse is uh, we don't always run our horses um uh, to go fast sure. we don't always um we don't always compete in the same terrains, the same tracks, you know, the same weather conditions. How do you judge speed? So there's multiple different ways of doing it, but certainly one of the ways of doing it is we only take horses best three or fastest three rounds in their last 10. Mm -hmm. So we're trying to get rid of, or we're trying to recognize when this person pushes the button, can they push the button, you know? Yeah. So their fastest three in their last 10. And equally, one way of looking at it to level the playing field with things like terrain is just take it like an OBP, how many horses were you faster than on that day? And what that levels off is the idea that actually we all competed going up a hill, we all competed on a wet ground. How many horses were you faster than? Yeah. So how many, did you, how many were in the class and how many were you faster than? Mm -hmm. That's brought us a metric called the top speed percentage, the TSP. And if we look at the horses tomorrow in the five star listed by TSP, and what I'm hoping to give you here is an idea on which horses should we look for. Cooley Rosalind is fast, 96%. But what I would say, if you go back to the other metric, which is just your last 10 rounds, Cooley Rosalind has a 70%, like seven clears in their last yeah. 10. Little asterisks beside JL Dublin as well, also 70%. Mm -hmm. um, so they're, they're not perfect cross-country jumpers, and, and we know that. Um, but they're, but Cooley Rosalind is fast. Kirsty Chabert is right there with him. Don't be surprised. Classic and Kirsty Chabert, let me just check this leaderboard again. They're not far off it. They're uh, Kirsty Chabert sits alongside Klaus, uh, it's a 31 score. It's ahead of, it's ahead of um, Oliver and, and Cooley Rosalind. It's alongside the former Blenheim winner, Malin Hansen Hotop. But Kirsty Chabert is a very, very, or classic, I should say. She's a fast horse. And that could count for a lot tomorrow. If, some of, if some of these behind her, I wouldn't be surprised, and I don't think any of us should be surprised, if we see classic edging towards that podium by tomorrow evening yeah absolutely and you know again the ground should be very good going here we haven't had much rain but i i haven't heard much about it being too hard out there so i don't think the riders will be uh hanging about at all i don't think there will be any conditions that will hold them back 
Um, you know, and, and again, the, the track has opened up a little bit this year, I would say. So I think the time, you know, it's hard to say exactly how much we'll see clear, but I, I do think we'll see quite a few clear. You do? By the time tomorrow, I think I would say. I love that game. It's always um, filled with um, wrong answers. Like, <laughs> did no one ever... <laughs> It's so hard to get it. Like at this point, we're all just throwing numbers. Yeah, it's like, hey, let's for the back. Uh, <laughs> Kirsty <Kirstie> Jenner. <laughs> She's fast. <laughs> She's fast. Yeah, you end up at a point uh, with all this analysis when you get to Friday evening. God, it's been a long day. Shannon, it's been a long day. Yeah. See, Shannon's in like I don't know what time it is in Switzerland this time, but like Shannon is, Shannon is really hanging in there at this point. Um, Sally, thank you for that. It's a. Uh, I think the next hour, the next couple of hours, you do begin to feel the conversation move from review into preview. You yes. do begin to feel people looking towards tomorrow. Riders are starting to come off the track and talk about which combinations, which fences. Yep. Um, you know what I always say, if you ride well, it rides well. <laughs> As a man very famous and smart once said. <laughs> uh, Sally, thanks for coming on. Thanks for the Thank time. Thank you so much for having me. Uh, we'll, uh, we'll be back with another uh, Echo Ratings eventing podcast, Inside Kentucky Show, over the next couple of days. Stay tuned.